Hi, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist, and um, <clears throat> today I wanted to talk to you about mitral valve prolapse. A lot of people have written to me and asked me uh, to do a little video on mitral valve prolapse, and it's taken me this long, and I'm really sorry. Um, it's, it's been pretty hectic at work, but uh, happily I'm in sunny Barcelona at the moment at a conference, and I, um, and I had a little bit of time, so I thought I'd do a quick video on mitral valve prolapse. Um, so the first thing to try and uh, uh, explain is what exactly is mitral valve prolapse. For that, you have to understand what the mitral valve is, okay? Now, um, the way it is is that the heart is uh, composed of four, four structures. There's two chambers at the top, uh, and then there's two big, uh, hard-working chambers at the bottom, okay? And the left ventricle, the left ventricle, which is... Um, uh, which is the most important pumping chamber of the heart, uh, and because it pumps the blood all around the body, um, is fed into by the left atrium. So the left atrium sits there, so blood comes from the lungs into the left atrium, and then through the left atrium, it goes through this valve called the mitral valve, which is between the left atrium. So this is the left ventricle, this is the left atrium, and there's a valve in the middle, which is called the mitral valve. So blood comes from the lungs into the left atrium, and then the mitral valve opens like this, blood goes through, and then the mitral valve closes, and the left ventricle will pump blood out. But to try and avoid the blood coming back through here, the valve has to close like this. All right, so it opens like this, it closes like this. It opens like this, it closes like this. The reason it is closed is so that the blood can go out of the heart through another valve called the aortic valve. If it doesn't close, then the blood would leak back. So the first thing to understand is, what is mitral valve prolapse? Well, it's an abnormality of the mitral valve. Uh, and basically, the valve opens like this, closes like this. Now, if the valve opens like this and closes like this, okay, so that it actually protrudes into the left atrium, that itself is called mitral valve prolapse. Okay, so just at most, the valve should open like this and probably close horizontally. Uh, but no more than that. When it goes back like this, that's called mitral valve prolapse. What, um, so that's what mitral valve prolapse is. The problem is that sometimes what happens is it opens like this and then it closes like this. And when it closes like this, you've now got a gap through which blood can leak back into the left atrium. So that's mitral valve prolapse with mitral regurgitation. You don't have to have leaking of the valve with the mitral valve prolapse. But if you do get leaking, then that's more significant because that has real consequences later on in life. Whereas if you just have the mitral valve prolapse, then it's an anatomical thing, okay? So that's the first thing. So whenever you're told, well, you have mitral valve prolapse, what you want to say, what you want to ask is, do I just have the prolapse or do I have some leaking of blood? Okay, if you have a little bit of leaking, that's not a big deal. Uh, but sure, it's important to have that distinction. Why does it occur? Well, there are two reasons, okay? You could be born with this or you could acquire it. Uh, it can be inherited, so um, you can inherit it. You can inherit a gene and have it. It may not be inherited. It may be just something that is particular to you. Uh, there are certain conditions which are more associated with mitral valve prolapse, in particular Marfan syndrome. People who have connective tissue diseases can have it. Um, Ehlers-Danlos, that kind of thing can be associated with mitral valve prolapse. Um, and then um, it's also important to bear in mind that you can acquire it. Now, how can you acquire something like that? Well, you can get an infection on one of the valves uh, or you can, um, you know, the, the heart, the valves are attached to the walls of the heart. So if the walls of the heart are damaged in some way, then that can cause a, um, a deformity to develop where there may not have been one. So again, another question if you're told about mitral valve prolapse is to say, well, how do you think I acquired it? Is it, is it something I was born with or is it something that has happened? Now, if you're a young person, it's most likely that you were born with it. If you're a much older person, it's more likely that it's secondary to something else that may have happened in the heart. So that's an important issue to try and work out. Um, the next question then is, well, what does it mean to have mitral valve prolapse? Um, how common is it? Well, it's very common. Three to six percent of American population have mitral valve prolapse. They don't always have the mitral regurgitation, the leaking associated with it, but 
if you just got that deformity where your valve opens like this, but it just goes up to there, then you're called you're you're told you have mitral valve prolapse. And about 15 million Americans have it, so it's really quite common. Um, does it cause any symptoms? Well, that depends. You can have just asymptomatic mitral valve prolapse. You know, it doesn't really mean anything. You've got it. I wouldn't worry about that. Sometimes it can be associated with symptoms. Um, and the symptoms are mainly sort of non-specific symptoms, but can include chest pains, which may be flitting and not very typical. Um, they're not necessarily related to exertion. They can be uh, all over the place, all over the chest. Uh, uh, it can be associated with tiredness and breathlessness. It can sometimes be associated with palpitations, and a lot of people with mitral valve prolapse can complain of ectopic heartbeats. Um, it can sometimes be associated with dizziness. Uh, and when you have those symptoms, then you are termed as having mitral valve prolapse syndrome. If you don't have those symptoms, then you can just be told that you have mitral valve prolapse, but you can have this mitral valve prolapse syndrome. And there is some association with um, something called autonomic um, dysfunction, which means that um, the autonomic system is basically a system of nerves and hormones in our body which regulate how our body responds to various things. So, for example, um, if you're scared, then your heart rate rises. That's called that's because the adrenaline is secreted in the body, and that is um, that uh, that is as a result of activation of something called the sympathetic nervous system. Makes the adrenaline go, the heart starts beating fast. But remember, then something has to bring the heart back to normal. We automatically think, oh well, the heart settled. But there's something that then gets activated to bring the heart back to normal, and that's the parasympathetic system. So the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems are part of the autonomic nervous system and they sort of keep the body in a nice balance. Uh, and when you have this thing called mitral valve prolapse syndrome, you can get abnormality of this balance and that can cause the heart rate to go fast, that can cause dizziness, that can, that can cause tiredness, uh, that can cause some chest pains off and on. These symptoms are not dangerous, but they can be disabling for certain patients. And I'll talk you through what you should do about them in a second. Um, but in general, these are not dangerous symptoms if you get them. If you just have mitral valve prolapse, you don't have any leaking, and you have this, these kind of symptoms, they're not going to be dangerous for you, all right? Uh, the majority of problems come when you have a leak, and the leak is usually because one part prolapses more than the other. So the heart, the valve opens like this, and then you get this, so the blood starts leaking out. Now what happens with that is that over a period of time, that leak can get worse. How? Because what happens is that, for example, and it takes several years to do this, um, the valve opens, uh, the, the valve closes like this, the, valve, the, the left ventricle contracts, and therefore, instead of all the blood going out, some blood leaks back into the left atrium. Now, what that means is that a little bit less blood has gone to the kidneys. Now, the kidneys are extremely sensitive, and they think, oh, well, this person is dehydrated. We're not getting as much blood as we'd like to get. And so the kidneys try and absorb more fluid from the urine to try and restore the circulating volume. And the problem then is that you've now got a little bit more volume in your body, and then Again, what happens is you now have more volume coming into the heart, the heart contracts, and a little bit more leaks back. And so still the kidneys will not get as much as they're used to. And so you can get into this vicious cycle over several years, um, whereby the leaking gets worse and worse and worse because the volume in the body is getting more and more because the kidneys continue to absorb fluid to try and restore the volume. The heart pumps out the higher volume, but it's not pumping all of it out back to the kidneys because some of it is leaking back into the left atrium. So you can get into this vicious cycle and that can cause progressive uh, leaking. And as you get uh, more and more leaking um, um, uh, and you get more and more volume in the body, the heart gets stretched and stretched and stretched. And as the heart's getting stretched, it starts losing its elasticity and therefore can weaken. So if you have leaking associated with the mitral valve prolapse, then it is important for someone just to keep an eye on the heart every two or three years, just to make sure that the valve isn't getting worse. If uh, you have a lot of leaking, moderate or severe leaking, then you should get someone to scan your heart every six months to a year 
to make sure it's not getting to the point where the left ventricle is beginning to stretch to the point that it can't be restored back. Um, and usually, if you get it early enough and you treat it, usually by an operation, uh, then that sorts the problem out. But this is only something that happens largely in an older population. If you're young, you don't have any leaking, you've just got this appearance of prolapsing, don't worry, it doesn't really require anything. The complication rate is very low, less than 2% per year. Uh, uh, so, um, and, and, and the next thing to say is, well, what can you do about the symptoms? You know, if you're getting chest discomfort or if you're getting um, a little bit of breathlessness or if you're getting the palpitations or the dizziness. Well, the first thing to say is that if you are getting these symptoms, uh, the first thing is not to get worried, okay? They don't signify anything particularly dangerous. Number two, the second thing to do is not to avoid exercising. Exercising is generally good, so you should try and continue to exercise. Uh, number three, if you find that you're getting dizzy or palpitations, then if you uh, increase your fluid and salt intake, that often helps because there is this autonomic dysfunction that is associated with this condition. So the blood pressure can sometimes be run a little bit low, and therefore you can feel dizzy. So if you increase your salt and volume intake, that uh, salt and fluid intake, then that makes a difference. Sometimes compression stockings are quite helpful as well. So wearing compression stockings pushes the blood up and that helps with the mitral valve, um, the symptoms associated with mitral valve prolapse. For the palpitations, magnesium is good. And of course, you can always take beta blockers and they help as well, all right? Uh, but continue with the exercise and don't let it get on don't let it overwhelm you i don't let it don't be preoccupied by the mitral valve prolapse if you all you've got is this slight structural deformity if you have a bit of leaking then it's worth being um, under follow-up and asking someone to do a scan every two or three years just to ensure that things aren't getting worse um, but again the only thing you can do is pay good attention to your lifestyle um, is there anything else? So the, the, what can happen with mitral valve prolapse? Well, as time progresses, as I say, if you, your, your prognosis is to a large extent for the majority of people guided by whether you have significant leaking of the valve or not. If you don't have any leaking, then your prognosis is generally very, very good. All right. And um, you should pretty well much live the same kind of life expectancy as a normal person. But so I wouldn't worry if you have no leaking. If you do have leaking, worth getting checked out. If you do get some of the symptoms, it may be that they're attributable to the mitral valve prolapse. It may be that they're not. But continue to exercise, continue to um, um, eat healthy, continue to sleep healthy, and continue to. Um, uh, not let this oh, preoccupy, preoccupy your mind, uh, because if you let it preoccupy your mind, you'll notice it more and more. Uh, and I hope this was helpful. So I hope this answered some of the questions that people asked me about mitral valve prolapse. Um, now, here we go. I just wanted to, so this is me. I just want to finish with my little spiel at the end. Um, this is my website. Um, this is my Facebook page. Keep the questions coming in. I'm sorry I haven't been able to reply recently, but I will, I promise. I've made a mission to do it. This is Jeanette's secretary. <laughs> this is my Jeanette. This is, this is my secretary, Jeanette. So you can get in touch with her if you need to contact me. We've just started a new channel called More Than Just Medicine, which is for all medical conditions, and we hope to give you lots of good advice. There's already lots of videos on there on stomach issues because a lot of people have written to me and said, look, you know, it'd be really good if we had a gastroenterologist on board who could tell us about the stomach. So if you get a chance, please visit More Than Just Medicine channel on YouTube. Um, and uh, if you can, please consider sharing this video because there may be other people who would want to benefit, who may benefit from knowing a little bit about mitral valve prolapse. The only other thing I'd ask is if you could, if you could possibly watch the ad at the beginning, then that's really good because that just generates a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of revenue. So thanks anyway. Take care. All the best.